Mm -hmm. uh, Sue, Hugh, Jin Ha, it's lovely to meet you both. Uh, I absolutely love, I love the first season, love the new season as well. Thank you. Um, Jin Ha, I'd love to start by asking you, you've previously said that Solomon is who you would have been if you weren't an actor. Yeah. Now having, now having two seasons under your belt and with Solomon starting to go down a different path, how do you reflect on that? Yeah, great question. Thank you for watching, by the way. Yeah, it still feels true. It still feels true. Um, even in season two's arc for him, where he is grappling with so much more of, I think, the, the mental and emotional weight of the, the responsibilities or maybe bur burdens, he might say, of the generational sort of expectations or hopes. Um, as he's feeling that more, I, I do think he's, even that journey, what I mean is even that journey that he's going through feels similar to me of like, oh right, like having immigrated here when I was seven or eight, di very different circumstances, but like that's still very much a part of my own experience and coming to terms with like, how do I fit into this country? You know, as an, as an Asian American, as a Korean American who was born in Korea, but I've lived in America for most of my life, uh, where do I fit in and where don't I fit in? Or um, what's my voice? And uh, him, Solomon's journey as well, I think a lot of it is like him wanting to push forward and hold on to what's behind him in terms of, let's say, you know, like in so many different ways, not just family. And that feels, that feels very real to me, but also in a very different way of like, I'm an actor and I get to think about these things because I did a show that it kind of talks about this, whereas like, yeah, if I kept working and if I worked in finance, I don't know that I would have the leisure or the, the wherewithal to, or the space to feel like I can actually kind of just think about what was it like for my grandparents? <laughs> You know, and Suhu, Suhu, I'd love to jump over to you. Uh, there's a lot of things about this show that I could sit here for hours singing the praises of, but one thing I'd love to talk to you about is the score. I noticed it in season one and in season two as well. It's just, it's so precisely used to let the dialogue speak for itself and for that emotional weight to come through. What conversations did you have during production, during editing, about how you were going to use score? Um, thank you for asking that question because I feel like Nico deserves all the gold in the world for what he does in the show. I mean, Nico is involved, he did season one, but Nico's involved even before we shoot a frame. We talk about the palette and then I listen to stuff and send him when we shoot. And he gets all the dailies, so like sometimes I'll remember something on set and I'll text Nico, like, Nico, this is coming to you. One of the things we said about season two is you wanted to bring a lot more of a jazzier asyncopation to the score. Um, in season one, we favored the strings, the cellos, the pianos. And in season two, we really wanted to bring in, because we wanted the world to feel bigger in season two, and musically bigger as well. So we brought in a lot more brass and woodwinds and more percussion. And what's interesting is there's this, a perfect example of what Nico does so well, is there's a scene in episode six between Solomon and Naomi, um, and it's their goodbye scene. I said, Nico, don't push it too hard. We don't need to push in terms of making this too sad. We just need to feel like we're witnessing um, the end of something without pushing the music. And he said, Sue, I'm gonna send you something. You're gonna wanna, when you he listen to it, have an open mind, but I'm gonna use a trombone. I remember when he said that, I was like, what? I don't Whoa. want to hear a trombone, Nico. So that's going to sound terrible. And if you listen to the score on that scene, there is one trombone that plays this note, and it is the most elegic note. And it was Nico's genius that like he really heard that instrument then. And it, awesome. it's beautiful. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's I beautiful. didn't hear the trombone at all. I felt it. Yeah, you f it's, wow. it's gorgeous. And so Nico just... He's fast too, and one thing that's wonderful about Nico is you'll tell Nico like, Nico, I think this needs this isn't working here. What's wrong? He'll be like, I know what to do, and he'll just compose something overnight, and it will work. He's just amazing. And I I could sit and talk to you both about this all day, but I'm being given the rap. Uh, thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Absolutely love the show. Can't wait for people to see season two. Thank, thank you so you. much.